Hello again, this is chapter 10, part 1, and what we're going to do is go over relevant costs, make or buy, sell or process, and scrap or rework. And what these are are tools that help you, if you have a business, on an easy way to make these kind of decisions. Now, of course, there's a lot more things to consider, but this is a quick way to do it. Now, first of all, you need to understand when you're doing this kind of analysis, you need to pay attention to what costs you look at and what costs you don't. The costs you look at are called relevant costs. The ones you don't care about are irrelevant. And the number one that's irrelevant is sunk costs. And I'll give you a good example. If you caught, bought a car for $10,000 and you still owe $2,000 on it, the only thing that would be relevant in your decision to get a new one would be not having to pay the $2,000 balance. It doesn't matter that you already paid 8000 for it because those are called sunk costs. They're irrelevant to any future decision. What we look at are what are the incremental costs associated with the decision. We have what we call out-of-pocket. Those would be additional cash outlays. We'd have opportunity costs, which is what happens when you make that decision. What do you lose out on? An avoidable cost can be eliminated by choosing one alternative. What cost goes away if you make the decision? Okay, so relevant pertains to the future. They are expected future cost or revenue. You've got to remember this. Differs among alternative course of action. It's something that changes based on a decision. Is both quantitative and qualitative. Irrelevant are any costs that don't change based on your decision. Like, for instance, um, if you have to pay insurance and it's not going to change no matter what car you have, uh, that would be an irrelevant cost because you're still going to incur that expense. However, usually when you buy a new car, it's going to go up. So it would be the difference that you would care about. How much more is it going to go up? Again, some costs are always irrelevant because you can't change them. Now, let's go through some examples so you get a good feel about what's relevant and what's irrelevant. So, the cost of a roof repair made on a rental property last year. That is irrelevant because the money's already gone. The cost of insurance on a new vehicle when deciding to buy a new vehicle. That is relevant because that's a cost that's going to change in the future based on making that decision. Cost of new equipment under evaluation to replace used equipment. That's relevant. Original cost of the old equipment that's being evaluated, that's irrelevant. Cost of previous year's insurance policy on old equipment being evaluated, irrelevant. Maintenance cost of the new equipment, that's relevant. Unless you're already paying maintenance on your equipment, so it would only be the difference that would be relevant. Accumulated depreciation being evaluated for replacement, irrelevant. Installation of the cost for the new machine, that would be relevant. Because, see, that's a cost that would change. Sales value of old machine, that would be relevant. All right, so for short-term decisions, remember, incremental analysis approach. That's what we're going to do when we look at part one and part two. We're only looking at costs that change based on a decision. So we ignore irrelevant we focus on relevant costs and profits. We use a contribution margin approach with variable and fixed costs. And remember, avoid including your sunk costs because they don't change. Avoid using unit costs unless they are purely variable. So you might include overhead only if you have a variable portion of the overhead. So let's take a look. There are seven uh, short-term decision tools we can use and in this part we're going to cover the first three which is should you make it or should you buy it uh, should you sell it as is or process further or should you scrap or rework make or buy to buy a product or service or produce it in-house the heart of the decision is how best to use your resources how do our variable costs compare to the outsourcing cost are any fixed costs avoidable? And what could be due to free with the free capacity? So, decision. If the incremental cost of making exceeds the incremental cost of outsourcing, 
then we outsource. If the incremental cost of making are less than the incremental cost of outsourcing, you do not outsource. So here is our example. We have uh, a, a key part for a machine and we're trying to decide should we make it or buy it and we know our incremental costs which of course are variable costs per unit which include our overhead which has a variable cost. So what we're going to do is we're going to list all of our variable costs including the incremental overhead and we're going to compare it and in this example it would be if we have included all of the costs we should go outside and out so we should make it because it's cheaper than buying it all right now what about sale or process decision companies must decide whether sell partially completed products as is or process them as other products decision depends on the cost and revenue of processing company will select the action with the higher income again sell as is or process further if the revenue exceeds extra cost, we're going to process. If the revenue is less, we're going to sell as is. So now we have an example. My company has 7,000 units that it produced last year at a cost of 154000 We don't care about that because that's a sunk cost. This year's model is better than last year's, and the 7,000 units cannot be sold at last year's normal selling price of $35 each. Mike has two alternatives. They can be sold as is to a wholesaler for $56,000 or they can be processed further at an additional cost of $125,000 and then sold for $175,000. So let's take a look at those. Again, only going to look at the incremental cost so we don't care what it costs to make them. So the revenue to sell is fifty-six, dollars to process is $175,000 less the additional cost to process them, and there's our net income. So based on this, we should not process further because it would cost us $6,000. So they should just sell it as is. Now what about scrap or we work? Well, what happens a lot of times you have some products that need work, you put them in a pile, and the question is, should you just scrap them or should you try to fix them? So here's our example. Uh, we have jackets that were damaged that cost 102000 Again, we don't care about the 102000 Sunk costs. These jackets were damaged, and now we have three alternatives. Jacket can be sold at scrap to a secondhand clothing store for 20400 We can disassemble them at a cost of 6800 and sold to a recycler for 40800 Or we can rework the jackets for 115,600 and then sell them for 153. Again, we don't care about the 102,000 because that's sunk and it's not relevant to the decision. So here's our three revenue streams. We subtract the costs and then we can decide which would be better. Now, based on the numbers, the rework would be the best, but personally, I think it would be better to recycle because that's the least effort. And that ends part one.